Our next speaker is Fernando Meza, CEO of OneUpWeb, presenting Digital Marketing Beyond the Basics, How Digital Marketing Can Impact the Entire Marketing Communications Mix. Fernando is the CEO of OneUpWeb. He's been privileged to work in media and marketing since 2000 and is an Emma Bowen Foundation alumnus. During his EBF fellowship, Fernando worked for the Marketing Services Department for ABC Entertainment while completing his degree in strategic marketing. After college, he spent six years in Los Angeles working for a creative agency in a variety of roles ranging from producer director to post-production to miscellaneous music supervisor, launching series television such as Lost, Desperate Housewives, and Extreme Makeover Home Edition as well as co-branded campaigns between Disney Cable Networks Group Properties and Honda. In 2009, Fernando moved to New York, freelancing for cable network groups and creative agencies based in New York City and LA before pursuing a career in advertising. After five years of working with an amazing network of professionals on brands like HBO, Johnny Walker, Smirnoff, Puma, and Prudential, Fernando accepted a position at OneUpWeb, a digital marketing agency here in Traverse City. In his first year with OneUpWeb, he led new business development initiatives, securing over $1 million in new business. In 2014, Fernando accepted the opportunity to acquire OneUpWeb and become its CEO. He has repositioned the already successful agency into a company relevant to the new challenges that brands face in this digital age. Throughout his career, Fernando learned that specific themes always triumph. Be nice, honest, and authentic. Stories always win. Amazing creative is inspired by amazing strategy. And teamwork makes the dream work. He serves his community as a board member for Traverse Connect and Northwest Michigan Health Services, a federally qualified health center. Welcome, Fernando. Thank you, Jody. Uh, that was a little embarrassing for me, but I appreciate you trudging along. Thank you. Um, and a quick shout out to, uh, you know, wearing my NMHSI hat. Get your flu shot at NMHSI. It's free. It's easy. Come check us out. So <clears throat> without any further ado, um, as Jody mentioned, my name is Fernando. It's a privilege to, to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you. This is obviously a little different in that normally I'd be able to look at uh, you, but I certainly wanna create an environment that allows you to be able to ask questions. Uh, some of the content that I'm gonna be going through uh, can, can certainly be a little dense. Um, and I imagine so that, that at three o'clock, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone's uh, fighting that urge to take a quick nap. So I will try my best to, to bring the enthusiasm um, as it relates to digital marketing and marketing in general. Um, and please, by all means, feel free to ask a question. I certainly wanna create an environment of just communication here, uh, albeit uh, through this virtual setting. So I'm gonna go through uh, and, and try to leave as much time um, at the end of my session for questions. Uh, so if, if you do have questions related to a topic that I'm uh, currently going over, you know, it's, it's certainly okay to, to drop them into the chat and, and I will do my best to answer them, but do know that there will also be an opportunity to get those questions answered uh, later on in the session. Um, and I do believe that this session will be provided to you at least in recording and then also the slides as well. Um, and we have a unique uh, landing page that we created at oneupweb.com that we can share as well so that you can go uh, and, and, and subscribe to certain resources that I'm gonna be going over in this session. So uh, without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. So we have an opportunity of working with a variety of different clients across many, many industries across the country. And you might be surprised to know that there are very common themes that we always encounter across all the organizations, and this varies across industry, it varies across different industry maturity, but uh, the thing that, that we wanted to share with you is that you know, you're not alone. Uh, all, 
you know, you might think that these problems are unique to you, but these are some common challenges that we encounter that, that directly affect, and, uh, you know, digital marketing initiatives that also end up affecting business objectives and ultimately performance and profitability. And I share this so that there's an opportunity for us to level set here as far as what you're experiencing and what we encounter in our, in our, uh, with our clients across, you know, the country. So some current challenges that exist, you know, communication, I know that it's kind of, you know, redundant and, and maybe you've heard this once or twice, but communication always seems to be a challenge with organizations. Uh, silos exist and run really, really rampant. Um, between uh, different business units, between uh, executive leadership, uh, and, and even you know between customer and and brand. Um, so you know, uh, do not think that that you are alone if you feel like this is something that that is common to you or or, or you can relate to. Um, this common theme that that we also see is that there's always this this opposition and these, there's the oppositional forces between sales and marketing. You know, the, the definition of marketing includes sales. And uh, in our experience, we always uh, see that sales ends up being the priority over marketing. And, and the only time that sales communicates with marketing is when they need a sales sheet or an update to a brochure. Um, and, and I think that there's always an opportunity to, to break that relationship and understand that marketing helps the function of sales. It adds value to that transaction, to that interaction, and these two things work hand in hand. Um, you know, the, the big one that always comes as a surprise to me is that uh, the customer always lacks a seat at the table. It is so easy to hear from your customer uh, if you're a retail brand, I'm sure you hear from them all the time. If you're a restaurant, I know you do. Uh, so, you know, there are opportunities for you to engage these customers outside of moments of, of you know, that are related to customer service. So, um, you know, think about that as you go through your process of planning and, and really ask yourself whether or not the customer has a seat at the table. Um, Another uh, bucket of challenges that we see are understanding, um, you know, uh, marketing is, is an afterthought. Um, it's not something that's prioritized. There's no channel, as I mentioned earlier, as far as that voice of the customer. Uh, and and it, it's the departments that we interact with are always under-resourced. Uh, there is one person that has 10 or 15 different hats. Uh, and I can tell you right now that, that marketing is very, very complicated. And you need more than just a marketing manager to be able to handle that. And it's really interesting to me that that we see this theme play out across our client base, where you know we're talking about big organizations, you know, with, that make a lot of money, um, and the marketing department is is anemic at best. Um, technology uh, is another thing that that we see as a barrier uh, for clients that are trying to navigate, you know, marketing in this day and age. Uh, either technology is out of date, um, it's being handled in a really, um, I don't want to say traditional way, but uh, we have found that in some organizations that the function of, of the administration of a website is still handled by IT, which I always thought was really weird because the only time I ever want to talk to IT is when I you know, have a problem with my email or something like that, not when I need to change landing page copy, uh, or update products in my feed or you know, implement SEO strategy. Um, the other thing that, that we see as, as a theme as it relates to technology is that it's seen as an expense instead of a value add, which I've always thought was, was strange because in this day and age, you know, everyone knows that domains you know, are, are things that are you know, transacted. Right, like you know, if you've ever had an experience with a domain squatter, when you want to acquire uh, a, a domain, or or when you think about it like this, the amount of energy that you invest in your digital marketing strategy is actually an asset, right? Like, and that's something that we at at One Up Web, we have these very unique products that help you know private uh, equity companies decide value of a company's uh, uh, web presence. And so 
I think that that there needs to be a shift in the industry as far as you know viewing these things as expenses versus z- seeing it as value and investments. Um, the I think that that leads into my my last point under this bucket of of outdated schema and and what I mean by that is the mechanism by which we determine value and our constructs for measuring such is really outdated. I find that that C-suites are often very removed uh, from what's happening at the marketing level, um, which, which is a shame because you know, what happens in the marketing level in, impacts so many different things that, that is very important to the C-suite. So I think that, that if anything, um, what COVID has done recently is, is made it very apparent as far as how important uh, it is for us to change the way that we think, change the way that we operate, and update our method uh, uh, by which we run, you know, schema through. So, um, you know, the last bucket here, as far as the challenges are, our measurement um, is what I'm doing working. Um, how do I measure this? Uh, what are my key performance indicators? that we determine value and, and, you know, beyond just vanity metrics, right? Which is like, you know, you can drive a ton of traffic to a website, but unless it's the, you know, the appropriate audience or persona, it really doesn't matter uh, because, you know, conversions, AKA whether or not somebody transacts with your website or engages with your website, doesn't really matter. Um, and, and then the last bucket there is, is measuring brand sentiment and how you report on that engagement. Um, brand is something that's very important. The difference between you know, your brand and your competitor's brand is what people perceive it to be. So how well you can measure that engagement you know, through social, through tools like Google Analytics, um, those are things that, that, that people struggle with only because they get a little bit jaded and cynical of the data that comes through. So that's just, you know, some current challenges that we experience, you know, when we engage with clients across the spectrum of industry here at One of Pleb. This is always a, <clears throat> maybe some of you all have seen this cartoon in LinkedIn, but, you know, it's, I know that it's kind of cliche at this point, you know, and, and it's really, Something that that um, I don't want to belabor too much, but I think it's obvious that COVID has changed things, and and we personally here at the office saw this as an opportunity, where overnight businesses were trying to transform themselves into becoming different types of businesses and trying to leverage technology to do that, and you know survival and the sense of urgency can be a hell of a motivator when you're trying to figure out how to operate in this new normal. So um, I think that this image uh, uh, quickly, you know, uh, drives that point home. So as far as an agenda here, now that we've kind of level set and talked about some challenges that we're seeing, you know, across the industry and what we're helping our clients navigate, um, what we're gonna get into here is how you can use a tool like Google Analytics um, which is a free tool that Google uh, gives you uh, so that you can manage you know, your website and a variety of other um, uh, initiatives related to your website, both on page and then through social referring channels like, you know, like social, uh, but also how you can leverage the information that Google uh, provides you to make better decisions about your marketing mix. I think that that for those of us that have been in marketing for for a while now, marketing for me, at least in my experience, has always been something that's very fragmented. And I'm talking like when I first started in 2000 as an intern at ABC to then going through and doing stuff at a higher level in in New York when we're doing big multi-media buys that were hundreds of millions of dollars is that you had a lot of uh, uh, fragmentation as far as skill set. You had your PR department, uh, you had your media buying agency, you had print, you had digital. And it was really up to the client to figure out a way to connect all those dots in a way that was meaningful beyond just measuring brand impression. 
And nowadays, and it's certainly become apparent, you know, here at One Up Web, you know, especially with the type of work that we're doing in the last three years, is that is that digital has an extraordinary opportunity to be able to connect the entire mix. And in fact, instead of being a piece of the pie that that is a part of the marketing mix, it could be the leading force that not only informs all the channels, but also helps to connect the entire ecosystem. Um, and that has been something that's been really exciting. Uh, it's certainly been, been, you know, challenging, you know, because essentially we're, we're developing new modes of operating that don't really have, you know, like, it's not like I could go to, to, to Amazon and buy a book that tells us how to do this. It'd be great if somebody did, uh, uh, but that does not exist. So, um, but the opportunity for us to be able to leverage Google Analytics, at least in a very fundamental way, is what I hope to be able to cover here with you all. So, Certainly excited to jump into the actual substance here. Um, so just to give you just a quick introduction to what you can do with Google Analytics. And for those of you that are really familiar, I apologize, uh, but I certainly wanna make sure that I at least level set for the conversation. And excuse me real quick while I take a deep uh, break here. Um, usually I'm not used to talking this much, but I'm sure some of you might beg to differ. Uh, Google Analytics. So in this dashboard, you can get insight into users, uh, meaning uh, the people that visit your website in, in, within a certain date range, uh, the dimensions uh, that are, are also available for you to be able to determine like descriptive characteristics, meaning um, what browser did they come from? Was it, you know, Firefox? Was it Chrome? Uh, was it Safari? Was it DuckDuckGo or whatever other janky ISP exists out there? Um, and then like, what device did they use, right? Was it mobile? Was it uh, a tablet, desktop? Uh, within uh, Google Analytics, you could also get into specific metrics as far as how much time did they spend engaging with your website? Uh, what, you know, how long is the, the, the duration by, you know, by session? Um, you know, where do they click after they come in on a landing page? Um, you know, the amount of information that is available to you in Google Analytics is extraordinary. Um, how much, you know, whether or not they bounce and what that means is, so I think you all done this, right? Uh, like where you inadvertently click a link because you're just kind of scrolling through your phone and, and you end up in an area that you don't necessarily want to end up. That sounded a lot weirder than it actually. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like that bounce rate, right? Like how quickly people jump as soon as they land on your website. Um, that's what we mean by bounce rate. Um, and then, you know, the sessions, you know, like uh, during a, a certain period, you know, how actively engaged are the people that are coming to your website? So um, these are just, you know, some buckets that exist as far as, uh, you know, what Google Analytics provides you. Um, and then when you start getting into more of the nuance to what you can get here, you know, you can get a lot of insight, you know, as far as like, like well, beyond like sessions and visitors and all that, you can get into, you know, and there's some screen captures there for you as far as, you know, gender, uh, age, geography, um, where they're coming from, you know, was it a social post with an embedded link that brought them to your website? Was it direct, meaning that, you know, somebody, you know, knows exactly who you are and went straight to your website? A referral link, whether or not, and, you know, a referral link is, if, if you know somebody writes about you uh, in a blog post and drops a link in their blog uh, that ends up you know referring back to you, um, or whether or not it's a straight up organic search where you know somebody is doing a search like you know uh, eye doctor near me, um, uh, whether or not the traffic comes from email or or if it's directly correlated to a paid search campaign that you're actively running. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, you know, behavior, you know, what are they doing once they get there? So you could start to get a sense here that the amount of information that's available to you is, is pretty in depth. 
and it allows you to, to, to get a little bit more insight here uh, as far as who your, <clears throat> excuse me, who your customers are um, and why, you know, they're coming to your website, are their needs being met, how are they engaging with you, and, and you know, the thing that's great about that is that if you get a better sense of, of who these people are, it helps you better communicate with them. Um, so, you know, when I say things like, you know, the better I know you, the better I can serve you, that's what we mean by that. And that just to give you some, some quick examples here. So let's talk about creative, right? Obviously, you know, the way that I would communicate with a group of 18 to 24 year olds uh, and, you know, versus 50 to 65 year olds is gonna be a little different. Um, I'm probably gonna use different types of messaging, different types of language, use different types of, of mediums to advertise, to, to connect with you. I am not going to take out an ad in a yellow book to connect with an 18 year old. I am not gonna try to run a, a, a TikTok video uh, and do a branded sponsored post there to try to connect with 50 year olds. That is not something that is best practice because those people do not play in those spaces. And that's what we mean by being able to make a more informed decision as far as how you can take the audience that you currently serve, your existing customers, and how that can inform your marketing strategy. Um, obviously, you know, the difference between, you know, gender, uh, especially nowadays with, with different, you know, gender fluidity and, and how people identify, uh, you have to make sure that you really understand your audiences so that you can connect with them in a way that, that is authentic. Um, ethnicity, you know, this is something that, that I think is very, you know, important, right? Like, you know, if you're, if you're marketing to me, are you using creative that I can relate to. So, and that means representation. You know, are people being fairly represented in your ad creative uh, so that you can better identify with them? And that's the beauty of things like digital is that you can get very, very targeted so that you can connect with your audiences in a way that relates to them without necessarily disenfranchising other groups that you also serve. Um, you know, messaging, you know what I meant by, uh, actually uh, cultural context, um, what I mean there, and without getting into too much, you know, anthropology jargon there is that, you know, um, the way in which I would communicate with somebody from Los Angeles is going to be a lot different than the way that I would communicate with somebody from Trevor City, which is going to be a lot different than I would communicate with somebody from Florida. Um, and, and that's uh, also true if you do business overseas, if, if you have products or services that you market abroad, you have to be very, very careful as far as understanding cultural nuance and context, whether or not it's low context or high context culture. Um, I think the most famous example that I can think of off the top of my head right now is the Chevy Nova, which in Spanish is Nova, which means doesn't go, which is a terrible name for a car if you're trying to break into a market. Um, so doing your due diligence to understand your customers, where they're coming from, uh, geography, age, gender, all of these things could better inform how you can express creative that resonates with them. More importantly, like where am I going to be doing my media buys? You know, to use a very shitty analogy, like if I'm going to go fishing for something, I want to know, uh, A, like what am I fishing for and what kind of bait do I need to use? Um, so, you know, if anyone has any questions there, please, you know, I can certainly dive in deeper at the end of the session there. But, um, and that's what we mean by, you know, going back to the whole topic here, which is Google Analytics can give you a lot of information about your audiences so that you can make more informed decisions here. Connecting the dots. Now, you might find it hard to believe, but when I say this, I mean it. I know that I own a digital agency, but I believe in the power of marketing and using the entire mix. I am not solely going to recommend that you do everything in digital. Um, you know, questions like how do I connect with your audience is gonna certainly be informed 
by who your audience is, what you know demographics they they fall in, and more importantly, like doing my due diligence to understand what kind of media they consume. Um, and so that means billboards, radio, newspaper, TV, direct mail, all those things are very, very uh, important levers that you can pull when you're marketing in this day and age. And, you know, personally, I still am a really big fan of radio. Uh, you know, there are a lot of really interesting technologies that are becoming available as far as how you can market within connected uh, devices and being able to go over the top. Um, and then, you know, like different types of branded uh, sponsorships within, you know, radio, which I think is always great. Um, and then, you know, getting to the point where you also, you know, are, are actively participating and in, in doing ad buys within newspapers and, and of course, billboards. Uh, you know, these places are great real estate for, for businesses, especially if it makes sense for your audiences. So, um, and what I mean by being able to connect the dots you can certainly leverage the power of Google Analytics to be able to measure these things. You know, and I know that that sometimes you know it can become a challenge uh, to understand how to to connect the ecosystem. But there are certainly some tricks that that I'm going to kind of run through here to help you with that. So uh, let's say I am the Grand Traverse Pie Company. Uh, and I want to do uh, a, a magazine buy for, uh, you know, the holiday coming up and, and uh, Bon Appetit. Well, I'm going to create, you know, a really awesome full page ad. And within that, what you want to do there is create a custom landing page that you can drive to so that you know that traffic that comes from this landing page is directly correlated to this uh, magazine uh, ad. Um, and, you know, the beauty about that is that, you know, it's, it's now you have an opportunity of connecting print with online. And then to take that even a step further, there's ways for you to create certain goal tracking and event tracking so that you can measure where people engage with you uh, uh, on that landing page. Obviously, if I'm Grand Traverse Pie Company and it's a holiday campaign, I'm trying to get people to buy pies so that I can, you know, sell them across the country. Um, and, and this is a very specific tactic that you can use and remix outside of just this context. You know, if you're doing anything offline, create a specific landing page that is, is unique to the ad buy that will have its own URL and it's unique goal tracking so that you can just, you know, measure how, you know, its efficacy. Um, you want to make sure, though, that when you're doing that, that you are, you know, keeping a, an inventory of, of these landing pages so that, you know, when you go into a, a, a Google Analytics, you can select the appropriate views so that you know that this landing page is correlated to this offline initiative and being able to measure that in that way. Because, you know, we deal with clients that have... Um, 50, 60, even upwards of 100 landing pages. So, you know, you know, if you're going to get up to that level, another tip that we would also recommend is that, you know, you create these no index tags because the last thing you want to do is create all this duplicate content that can potentially, you know, uh, put you in a really bad spot when it comes to, you know, Google. Because uh, when you start doing that, you start getting penalized for having too much, you know, duplicate content because it's kind of a black hat tactic. So. Um, so Fernando, can I interrupt? Can you, so you would do something, you would do something like that similar for radio ads as well? Definitely for radio ads. Um, you know, for any mechanism that is unique, so it's whether it's a, a billboard and there's certain tactics that I would use just kind of, um, make it a little bit more nuanced for the, for the channel. Um, but you know, specifically for radio, uh, beyond doing a landing page, and I'm going to get to this in a second, but um, um, I guess I'll get to that in a second. But yes, okay, sounds good. Program. Yeah. Um, so, you know, redirect domains and short URLs. So, this is something that's very important, you know, for billboard or if you do like, you know, if you have any kind of branded vehicles. Um, some of these URLs can be very, very long. Um, and the, 
the last thing you want, and, and you can see this if you check out like the address bar when you click a link, just take a look at how long that link you know is. And basically everything, pay, next time you do this, pay attention to the question mark. Anything after that question mark is tracking code. So uh, pro tip, if you don't wanna get tracked, take everything after that question mark off and then refresh the page in a new uh, tab so that you don't have to worry about getting pixels later. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, think about that, right? These long ass URLs that all of a sudden you're trying to fit on a van wrap or you're trying to fit on a billboard that just does not work, which is why it's important for you to create these different type of, of redirects that are basically using vanity URLs, right? So if, if for instance, to, you know, go back to the GT pie company analogy, uh, if I'm, you know, if I have a van wrap or if I'm doing a beta bus uh, uh, ad buy, I'm not going to put my full URL there. I would recommend that you do something like, you, you know, brand name. So www.gtpiecompany.com slash pi. Something really, really, really specific, really, really short, because you can always redirect these people to the appropriate landing page uh, or the appropriate area on your website. So um it, it same thing goes for van wraps and that's something that we we always uh educate our clients on so that you make it a little easier for people to be able to um to remember and think about like uh, the flash test <laughs> the flash test which you know i probably should, i'm going to change that uh jody before i give you this uh deck and what i meant by that is okay. uh um is if you can put, you know, something on a cue card and quickly, you know, show somebody and then put it away, like, like what's the recall there, right? That's how quick we're talking about here. Um, and, and, you know, and don't, you know, uh, don't think that you should also put a, uh, just a funny story here. Um, I once had a client in New York ask if it was okay for us to put a QR code on a billboard. And I remember thinking to myself, how am I gonna tell this dude that that is probably the worst idea ever going 75 miles an hour down a freeway and putting a QR code on here? Like, <laughs> no, that's not, uh, that's not something that we can do. And I do not advise you do that, sir. But, you know, just remember, you know, in, in this context, you're going for the impression of the creative and something memorable so that people can, when they go back home and they try to recall you, it's something that's, that's memorable and catchy. Um, another tactic that you can use, and I've seen, uh, who's a local, is it My North? Yeah, My North. Whenever they do advertorials, they use the bit URL function, so bit.ly, to create, you know, unique uh, URLs, short URLs in their blog content so that it's not this long ass, you know, uh, uh, link. Um, and I imagine they do that so they can also report out on performance and engagement, which is important if you're a client that's buying media here. So um, take advantage of redirects, take advantage of these vanity, you know, URLs so that you can make it easier for, for people to be able to remember, you know, you and, and more importantly, where they should go later on when they get home. Uh, so to go back to the question, Jody, that you said there as far as radio, um, this is where, where I think discount codes play in, you know, you hear this a lot in podcasts and, and certain, like, if you listen to, you know, like sports radio, um, and those branded sponsorships always have unique coupon codes that are specific to the, the ad buy. So whether it's on TV, whether it's on radio, using a, a coupon code to be able to track the efficacy of that engagement is another tactic. Now, the thing that I will say about coupons and coupon codes is that people have become conditioned to try to find these codes. So whether you use Honey, which is an attached uh, uh, an extension that's available to you in Chrome or Retail Me Not, or, or for that matter, just Facebook groups, right? Like there's no shortage of Facebook groups out there of people that, that like, oh, hey, this actually happens with one of our clients. Um, they've used promotional codes so much that their customers know that they just have to wait a certain amount of time before they discount or they, they, they upload a promo code for new merchandise that they upload to their website. Uh, 
instead of having to buy it at full price. Um, so, you know, everyone's shopping for a deal. Um, so, you know, beyond, you know, uh, giving somebody a 50% coupon code for signing up to join a newsletter or, or anything beyond that, um, I would be very cautious about how you use this tactic uh, on your behalf. So um, I guess I'll take a second. You know, I think, how am I on time, Jody? I think I'm at 36 minutes. Where's my clock? I still got. Yep, we're at 35. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And you have till three, if you want to stop around 340, and then we can take some time for questions. I'll do that. I got one other slide that I want to get to before I do that. So, um, you know, in, in uh, the past, uh, or at least what I've been discussing here up to um, this point is how you can use, uh, you know, the data that you get in analytics to make better decisions as far as, you know, creative um, um, and how you can use that information so that you know um, how to do better media buying is, is something that is, is, is a tremendous uh, opportunity that exists for you all if you just know what, what you're looking for in Google Analytics and just with a little planning, uh, those you know, basic tips that I kind of just shared are, are a way for you to be able to get better at, at just you know, uh, marketing in general outside of just digital advertising. So um, some additional considerations that I just wanted to kind of like, like take the opportunity to, to communicate to you um, because I think that these are very important and, and I certainly are, we're very passionate about these things here at the office, you know, so dare to be different, right? And so um, as barriers to entry lower and access to technology increases, differentiation is very, very important because, you know, the industry becomes very homogenized, right? Like, I, th I don't know if you guys haven't seen those videos of of brands and their COVID message, like the 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 clip montage, like on YouTube. Take a take a second to look at that. I swear it's the same script just said over and over and over again, you know. And and that doesn't feel very authentic. It feels very disingenuous, right? And I think that the one thing that that I would challenge you all to do is just be different, right? Everyone's kind of checking the same boxes. And if you want to stand out, you really have to break out of your shell and 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 try to do something that's a little bit outside of what you know everyone else is doing to get noticed. I'm not saying that you need to while out here, uh, but I am saying that that you should really invest in in being you know creative and at, at the very least being very honest, uh, so that you know consumers can feel like you're being very authentic with them because people know when you're talking shit, you know, and when you're just kind of bullshitting them. And at this point, you know, I would much prefer somebody just tell me straight, like, like what their, you know, what their messaging is or just being very thoughtful instead of trying to sell me something that they're not. So, um, you know, the second point that I wanted to make here is, is, you know, being very customer centric. We've all heard of, you know, like the patient centered model when it comes to health. Well, the customer, you know, the customer centric model is something that I think needs to be adopted here. And what I mean by that is how do you put your customer and this, these are conversations that need to have happen at, at, you know, all throughout an organization at the C-suite all the way on down is how do we put the customer at the center of everything? And then how do we create operations and mechanisms around that to better engage with them and to better serve them? You know, it's, it's not about you. It doesn't matter that you've been doing something for 20, 35 plus years. Nobody cares. They don't care. What they care about is like, how does this personally affect me? Sure, experience matters. But in that moment, like, like that's just kind of like dead space whenever you try to hit somebody with your credentials. Um, so, so just remember that, you know, for you and, and you know, to use a, a a Star Wars reference. I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> but you want to be, uh, you know, Obi Wan Kenobi to Luke Skywalker. <laughs> so, of course you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and so again, you know, take a back seat. If for people that know Joseph Campbell, it's the hero's journey. 
you know, like, or, or to use another reference, the, a brand story, uh, which is an amazing book. If you haven't read it, read it, please get it today, get an audible credit, cancel your subscription on Amazon as soon as you get that free credit. So uh, go then the last point that I wanted to make here is use your experience as a business objective and imperative. You need to really understand that, that you are trying to remove as many barriers to engagement with your customers as possible. Do not assume that, that people will go out of their way to, to, to do anything more than they have to, right? And so when you understand that, you know, that's where user experience kind of comes in. This is specific to digital advertising. I think that sometimes people just look at that and sometimes think that it's just relevant for, for accessibility and being ADA compliant. But, you know, if, if you go back to your analytics and you see that you're serving an audience that's primarily older, um, you know, they might have a hard time, you know, reading some of your text if you don't have the right font and you don't use the right color. Um, and making very small decisions like that will have a big impact when it comes to ROI. And all you're doing there is just picking a better font and choosing a better color. And so understanding that user experience and accessibility and compliance are not things that you have to just check from a compliance perspective, but it's an opportunity for you to know your audience a little bit better and curate a better experience for them is what we're talking about here. Uh, because do not assume that people will go out of their way to, to give you money. Um, you have to make it very easy for them to do that. So um, with that, uh, that basically you know, ends uh, this TED talk. Uh, but I would certainly like to open it up for questions. Uh, the next is just uh, uh, just some of my colleagues that are a lot smarter than me at the office. Uh, I'm glad that I used the photo that has eyebrows of me and not the one that my colleagues photoshopped my eyebrows out here. So, oh, nice. Nice. They're, they're a fun group. Uh, and then I'll just kind of end it here with, with a picture of my dog, which he's here napping right now. What's the dog's name? What's the dog's name? His name is Tedrick Lamar, AKA Teddy. <laughs> Perfect. So. Oh, there he is. Questions? Yeah, we do have a couple questions. So let me click over here. Um, how important is it to have scheduled paid social posts instead of just posting randomly and assuming your target audience will see it? That's very important. That's a great question. So Facebook became an amazing like drug dealer, right? Like uh, yep. <laughs> the first few are free, but then afterwards, you know, it's a pay to play model. Um, it is a better publisher uh, when, from a paid perspective than Google is. Um, and, and, you know, you'll notice that for instance, you know, we have a certain lifestyle client that whenever they post lifestyle content, the engagement goes through the roof. You know, it's a beautiful image of somebody that's like boating or somebody that's out in nature or something like that, right? right? right. But then the moment that you hit like some messaging that it's like, oh, here's a deal on X and Y, like you go from like having X amount of engagement to virtually nothing. So I would always advise that you basically put money behind every post. Um, and oh, wow. okay. yeah, I, I really would, you know, at a, at a minimum, you know, doing something like, like 20 bucks or something like that. And just, you know, starting from there and, and, you know, make sure that you have everything accurately tagged so that, you know, like, all right, after a while of me doing this at this level, like then you start AB testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's, yeah, that's good to know, surprising. I'm sorry that I didn't see this one pop up immediately when it was posted. Um, someone wants to know, what was the name of the book you just mentioned? Oh, I don't know. Uh, the Brand Story. Let's say it again. Brand Story. Brand Story? Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you just do a, a Goog uh, uh, Brand Story, let me see if I can find the author real quick. we run through this exercise ourselves. You can actually hire this guy. Uh, the author is Donald Miller. It's building a story brand. Clarify your message so that customers will listen. Is building a story brand the full name? Yep. Okay. 
Thank you. And I think that's going to do it for our time today. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you all. Uh, thank you so much, Jody, uh, and, and of course, Traverse Connect for putting this on. Uh, these types of events are super important and, and it's a pleasure to be a part of them. It was great to have you here today. So we really appreciate it, Fernando. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate thank your time you, and sharing your, your information. It was great. Cool. We'd also Great. like to thank once again, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan for making this event possible. We hope you all enjoyed the learning stage and encourage you to check out our last learning stage of the day coming up in just about 15 minutes, in addition to the other features of our virtual expo today. Thanks for attending, stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you at our next webinar. Thanks, Fernando. Oh. Oh, yeah, one, more. one last thing. Yeah, just one last thing. You know, like there's there's some resource content that my staff put together for all those that attended here. So if you okay. want to go over to our website, there there will be a landing page for you uh, to be able to access some of that resource content so that you can get you know some of this so some of this better content than what I took you through. And it's oneupweb.com, right? Yep, www. Okay. Put it in chat. You're good. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Fernando. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone.